Our goal is to find the area of this equilateral triangle. Now we happen to know that the area of any equilateral triangle is equal to root 3 over 4 times the length of one side of the triangle squared. So our goal here really is to find the length of one side of this equilateral triangle. So let's label one side to be k. So our goal then is to find the value of k. We can do this by first using the information we have about the area of our circle. We know that the area of any circle is equal to pi r squared. This particular circle happens to have area 9 pi. So we now have an equation that we can solve for r. First we'll divide both sides by pi and now we'll find the square root of both sides to get r equals 3. So the radius of the circle equals 3 which means the diameter of our circle must equal 6. Now we're told that triangle ABC is an equilateral triangle so all three angles in this triangle must equal 60 degrees. At this point, I want to focus on this triangle right here. Notice that we already know two of our three angles, so we can calculate the third angle to be 30 degrees. Notice that this red triangle is a 30, 60, 90 degree right triangle, and we happen to know a lot about these types of triangles. Here's the base version of this triangle. Now since these two triangles have the exact same three angles, we know that the ratios of their corresponding sides must be equal. So for example, the ratio of 6 to root 3 will be equal to the ratio of k to 2. We now have an equation that we can solve for k. First, we'll cross multiply. Now we'll simplify the left hand side. And finally, we'll divide both sides by root 3. So we now know the length of all three sides of our equilateral triangle. So we'll plug this length into our original equation. At this point, we'll simplify 12 over root 3 all to the power of 2. And now we can simplify the fraction 144 over 3. Finally, when we multiply these two together, we get 12 root 3, so our answer is C. Okay, let's begin with these two angles here. Since these two angles are on a line, they must add to be 180 degrees. As such, angle X will be equal to 180 minus W minus 1. Similarly, these two angles are on a line, so they must add to be 180 degrees. This means that Y will be equal to 180 minus the angle W plus 1. From here we can simplify both columns and now we'll add W to both columns to get the following. Since 181 is greater than 179, our answer must be A. Okay, let's see what information we can add to this diagram. First we are told that angle BCO is 30 degrees, so we can add this here. We're also told that side AC is the diameter of our semicircle so we can conclude that angle ABC is 90 degrees. Now notice that we have a triangle here and we know two of our angles so we can calculate the third angle to be 60 degrees. At this point we should recognize that we have a special 30-60-90 triangle so let's compare this to our base 30-60-90 triangle. Now on the base triangle, notice that the side opposite the 60 degree angle is equal to root 3. In our triangle, the corresponding side has length 6 root 3. This means that our yellow triangle is 6 times larger than our base triangle. So side AB of our yellow triangle must have length 6. Now notice that sides AO and BO are both radii of the given semicircle so we can conclude that these lengths are equal. If these two lengths are equal, then we have an isosceles triangle, which means this angle up here is 60 degrees as well. Now that we know two of our angles in our triangle, we can calculate the third angle to be 60 degrees. Since all three angles are the same, we have an equilateral triangle here, which means all three sides must have equal length. So they all must have length 6. 
At this point, we can find the area of this equilateral triangle by using a nice formula for finding the area of equilateral triangles. Since we know that each side has length 6, we'll plug this into our formula. When we simplify, we get 9 root 3. So the answer here is C. Okay, uh, to begin, let's say that this side right here has length x. Now, since all four rectangles have the same dimensions, we know that this side right here must also have length x, and this side right here must have length x as well. Now, from this, we can see that the length of side AD must be 3x. This also means that the length of BC is also 3x, and we can now add this information to column A. Now, since side BC has length 3x, we know that this side right here must also have length 3x, since all four rectangles have the same dimensions. And earlier, we determined that this side right here has length x. So, to find the length of DC, we'll add 3x plus x to get 4x. We can now add this information to column A, and we can see that column A now is equal to 4x over 3x. When we simplify this, we see that it is equal to 4 thirds, which is equal to column B. So our answer here must be C. All right, so this is an interesting one. We want the ratio of two circumferences. Well, think about it this way. If we have circumference 1 over circumference 2, of course, circumference equals pi times diameter, so that's pi times diameter 1, pi times diameter 2. Well, the pi's cancel, and so we just get a ratio of the diameters. A ratio of circumferences equals a ratio of diameters. And so we don't even have to bother with circumferences. That's just an extra layer of complication that we don't, we can just avoid that. We can say, let's just compare the diameter of the larger circle to the combined diameter of the two semicircles. And so what we're looking for is diameter of the larger one and then the sum of the diameters of the smaller one. That's the ratio we want in this question. So we're told that AB equals three-fifths of AC. So I'm going to write this as a ratio. AB over AC equals three over five. Now here's another trick we can use. Normally, in most ratio problems, it's a bad idea to just say, okay, this numerator is gonna be three, this denominator is gonna equal five, especially if we're actually looking for individual measurements or something like this. But here we're given one ratio and we just want another ratio. That's the only time that it's, it's actually perfectly okay to just say AB equals three, AC equals five. In other words, technically we'd have to say AB equals three N and, and AC equals 5N, and then we have a bunch of Ns floating around, and then when we figured out the new ratio, all the Ns would cancel. So I'm just going to say, let's not bother with the Ns. Let's just say, literally, AB is 3. This length here is 3. And because AB equals BC, this length is 3. Well, right away, we have the combined length of the combined diameter of the two smaller semicircles. The bottom of that fraction is 6. We're also going to say that AC literally is 5. So this distance here is 5. Well, AC, that's the diameter of the larger semicircle. So that's the top of the fraction. So we have a, a ratio of 5 over 6, or 5 to 6, which is answer choice D. So this is tricky. Let's first find out the easy things here. We have a 40 and a 75. So subtract, start with 180, subtract 40, subtract 75, and we get 65 degrees as this angle here. We know that BC equals CD equals BD, and so that has to be an equilateral triangle, and every angle in it has to be a 60 degree angle. Now from that, we might be able to use these two parallel lines to find some more angles. We might be able to find that angle, and this angle that would allow us, actually we found that angle, then we could find this angle, we found this angle, we could probably find the angle here, and then that would allow us to find this angle. There'd be a very long way to go about it. But instead of doing that, look at the really big triangle. 
See, the sum of the three angles in any triangle, big or small, has to be 180. Well, we have a 60 degree angle here and a 65 degree angle here, and we need that. And so 180 minus 60 minus 65 would equal angle A, which is 55 degrees.